So let's take a look at our scenario here. We have one service that's unhealthy right now. We click on the service right here. We see it has an anomaly score of 99. I talked about this just now. This is a score with a maximum value of 100. So this is quite significant. If we take a look at the anomalies of this service here, we get a similar view to before. So this is one of those single metric jobs and we can see the expected bounds where this light shaded blue uh, area and we have these significant spikes happening. This is valuable information, but it's only valuable for this one metric that we're looking at right now. However, this machine learning job is actually configured to not only look at this one service, it's configured to look at all of the services at once. So instead of looking at just a single metric, we can flip this over into a multi-metric view, which then gives us insight into all the services. As you can tell, interestingly enough, it's just that single service that is experiencing these latency spikes. This is better information, but it still doesn't quite answer all of our questions. We're still only looking at a single metric here, which is the transaction duration. It doesn't tell us the full story. So what we can do in addition to this is we can edit our job selection here once more and just select all of the jobs that we have available to us right now. That includes jobs running on Kubernetes metrics, general host metrics. It uh, includes things on APM data. It has out-of-the-box machine learning jobs on log data as well. And once we apply those, we can see how the UI transforms. And it now shows us all of the anomalies by the different jobs that we have. This is better, but the real value now comes in when we start pivoting on those anomalies. All of those anomalies that we found have certain metadata information attached to them. And we can attach additional field values that we would like to see in the job. For example, instead of viewing this by job ID, we could pivot this back to the service name. So now we can see that this equity portfolio service is definitely experiencing the highest amount of anomalies continuously. We could also look at this from a Kubernetes pod perspective, where once again, we would see that this particular equity portfolio pod has a high number of anomalies, anomalies continuously here. Another thing that we could then also do is if I just switch this back to service name, we can start to drill down into those anomalies. So let's select this red range here where things look pretty bad overall and scroll down. Scrolling down here, we get anomaly charts presented to us for all the different jobs that we just saw. But what's great about this is that it selects only those that are actually interesting. It's where that noise reduction comes into play. You can see it found a lot of things here. And obviously, we're looking at hundreds of metrics here. If you think about the Kubernetes pod name, we're, for example, looking at the memory usage of all of our hundreds or thousands of Kubernetes pods here. But it's only showing us one of them right here, because that's the one that has the most significant anomalies. So what does this tell us? We see that the equity portfolio pod has memory spikes, the sawtooth pattern. And it appears to be crashing. Next up, we see a high CPU usage anytime this uh, happens. In addition, we see our revenue drop. That's the job that we just created earlier on our revenue data. At the same time, when we have those memory anomalies, we also see a drop in revenue. And if we continue scrolling down, we can also take a look at our log anomalies. And the, the highest scoring log anomaly that we were able to find here is actually one about a termination of a service. Let's expand this here to get some category examples. And what we can see then is that the service terminated due to a Java Lang out of memory error. And we see all of that in a single screen, simply by looking at our machine learning jobs. Let me go back to the service map real quick and take a closer look at the service itself. If we take a look at the service, we see a few interesting things at first glance. We see that just when these anomalies started to spike, we had a new version deployed of the service. So that first spike can probably be explained by the version rollout, the latency spike, but the other spikes are then definitely a little strange. Let's look at our logs again. Logs are really important. The way I like to say, or I like to see it, is that you can use metrics to identify something strange that's happening. 
But logs will always have the real truth in them. Logs will be able to tell you what exactly happened. So let's look at those. Now, what we could do is we could look at the logs in a view like this, and we can filter them and exclude things that we don't like. But there's a lot of logs here. It could be millions or billions of log lines. We don't want to look through those manually. So we're going to make use of that same machine learning job again that we've seen earlier. Looking at our anomalies here, we get those broken down by the service. And we can see that the two services that are the most anomalous right now are the equity portfolio service and also the front end service. The front end service is probably showing up here since it's talking to the equity service. So that kind of makes sense. If I switch this over into categories, we can get a closer look at the categories that were identified by this job. The categorization here is automatic. We just need to point this machine learning job at our logs. And it's able to identify these categories for us. We don't have to tell it that we have logs like this. It's just automatically coming up with a regular expression to match those. And once it has a category identified, it will then continuously keep track of that category. Or as was the case here, it saw something that it hasn't seen before that's of significance. So this is a log line that we either haven't seen before or haven't seen in a long time, terminating due to Java Lang out of memory error, Java heap space. We can expand this to get two actual examples. And if I now view these logs in context, I can tell directly what happened before and after this log event. As we can tell, this was the very last log event that we had here. And if we scroll up, we can see that we just continuously added things into this in-memory cache, which eventually led to the service crashing. 